All right, guys, this is kind of what we've been waiting for. Um, do a little uh, unboxing here. Um, Gilliman Innovations, reached out to them. Heard nothing but good things about them. Uh, reached out to them, got a tune, got another belt, and got their adjustable clutch kit. Hopefully he's gonna make this thing bigger, stronger, faster. Um, like it probably should be from the factory, but even faster yet. Um, hopefully it takes care of anything else that we're having with clutching issues. 10.7 um, horsepower is what they claim. And from what I see and what I read and talking to Terry Gilliman, um, it's, it's gonna be pretty sweet. So here we go. everything is the uh, like a one day turnaround time so if you send out your ECU to them they'll turn it around in one day so here's the new helix 56 66 really nice looking piece nice machining work on it that. here's the clutch kit it uses earth magnets so you just figure out what you gotta put in the actual weights, as far as weight, and slide them in there. Here should be my ECU. With a fresh Gilliman tune in it. Instructions for it. Then we got a world's best belt, which is the one I already put on this thing. Um, got rid of all my belt slap. Completely gone. So now it's time to put the rest of the fun stuff on and uh, I'll do some reviews on everything and see how she goes. Alright, guys. Here's the bad boy ECU. I already got the seat out. Let's pop this panel off. There's our connectors. Okay, so we got the ECU back in. Buttoned up. Panel back on. So here's the instructions. So basically after the reflash or ECU replacement throttle body change, you need to leave the key on for 60 seconds. Do not crank the engine. Then turn the key off and wait three minutes. So that basically the ECU is gonna rewrite values in memory, into memory and then completely shut down. Then you should be good to go. And it's got a couple other things here that you'll need to know once you redo it. But so I'm gonna do that and I'll get back. set up get the clutching installed that's what I got going so far got all my tools and parts out here so once I get a few things done I'll show you guys what's going on okay got the clutch cover off and it's definitely not any worse than it was before I've put 250 maybe 300 miles I look exactly but on this new 
G Boost, world's best belt from Gilliman. So, on my particular XP, the belt itself is more or less fix the belt slab. It doesn't do any belt slab anymore, <clears throat> um, which is kind of crazy, but here's where we're at next. Okay, belt is off. Again, looks good everywhere. I got the 13 16 clutch bolt out. I'm about to take out the 3 8 pull the cover. Okay, 3 8 bolts are removed. Front of the cover, the spring. Use the stock weights. This is the X that they talk about lining up. So I'm about to put the weights in. Okay, so I got all the weights in there. Terry sets them up. I didn't realize that right off the bat, but Terry sets them up. He sends this in the kit here. So mine is set up 3-1-1. And then also he has a breakdown of what actually goes where and what changes. And so if you want to adjust it. And then uh, mine is a red spring. So the weights are already in there. Spring is on there, so now I'm gonna throw the cover on, torque everything down, and then we'll go to the secondary. Okay, 13 16 bolts put back in, in the primary. Torque to 96 foot-pounds. Everything's torqued on the primary. Time to tear apart the secondary. Okay, so the secondary bolt is a 15 millimeter. You can remove the secondary. Time to reinstall the good parts. Okay, secondary is a part. My homemade clutch compressor. So, primaries together. Secondary is coming apart. So I just gotta swap in the new parts, the new spring, push it back together. I'll show you how I use the spring compressors. Basically a long bolt, threaded rod. <clears throat> you can use a couple nuts or some washers, whatever. You're gonna need both, actually. Um, not too big of a deal if you don't buy the clutch tool, but the clutch tool is only a, basically a threaded piece of rod, so this works pretty good. Or you can just buy it from Gilliman. I think it was like 20 bucks. I completely spaced it out or I would've just bought it and been done with it. But there it is. Okay, so I did the round roller upgrade. Diamond round rollers. So here's one of the square pucks that was in there. Here's the new round one. And it's kind of hard to tell, but it has a slight lip on it already from where this square puck was rubbing. So definitely a recommendation to go with the round rollers. There's actually a sharp edge on the side that I changed already from where it rubs. You can feel that sharp edge that it wore it that it wore into the aluminum that much already. Yeah, you can kind of see it there. So definitely recommend that. Okay, so here's the other side. I'm not sure if the camera is gonna reflect it, but you can see that ridge. I mean, this thing's only got less than 800 miles on it. And that's, that's quite a ridge. I'm hoping the camera's picking this up well. It looks like it is, but you can see that ridge there. And it's definitely sharp. So get the roller kit. Definitely get the roller kit. Okay, so our clutch tool also doubles as a roll pin reinstaller. They have to go on them little holes on each side when you do the roller upgrade. So, we're ready to start a reassembly of everything else. All the new parts are in. So we'll put the clutch back on and see what we got.
everybody. Um, had a long week. Got the heater installed, Inferno heater. Finished up the lights and winch on the Thumper Fab rear bumper. Adjusted my doors, did a bunch of cleaning on it. Um, did the Gilliman clutch kit and Gilliman tune. Um, just got a lot of stuff cooking right now. Um, so you get the clutching and everything, and I've had that for a little bit of time, but I wanted to do the belt first, see where that put everything. Um, so I did the belt, got rid of all the belt slop, and then I ran that for about 300 miles and decided, all right, it's time for the, the clutching and everything else. So I did the clutching last night, but first I wanted to put just the tune. So I had the, the world's best belt, G-Boost, world's best belt, bought it from Gilliman. Um, put the tune in first um, just to test it. And you can definitely tell a difference in power with the stock clutching but you can also tell the stock clutching is not correct with the tune. Um, just like Gilliman tells you, you know, you kind of want to do the two together to make sure you get full advantage of how it's going to work. So I have some, a couple clips in there and I'll, I'll tag them as we go. But so the thing will, I ran it up to 80 miles an hour with the stock clutching, but it took a long time. Um, 80, like 8,050 RPMs, 8,100 RPMs is where it maxed out at, which is the same with the stock tune. Um, but I got more horsepower out of it, more top end out of it. Takes away the speed limiter in high, raises the low speed limiter, turns the fan, the cooling fan on at 190. Um, takes off the seat belt limiter, so if you don't have your seat belt on, it'll go over 15 miles an hour, which is, you know, if you're putting around the yard, you might get about 15 miles an hour and then you got to put your belt on because it shuts the power down and won't go over 15. Um, so it gets rid of all that and the power is smooth. The clutching is amazing. So then I put all the clutch together and ran it again last night and <laughs> go 81 miles an hour and I got out of it. It now spins about 9,050, 9,100 RPMs up on the top. Um, in lower range, you've seen the videos, it'll actually pull a wheelie. Um, it's smooth. I mean, the takeoff is just as smooth or smoother than it was when it was, when it stock clutched. But the way that it gets up and goes now is awesome. I can't wait to trail ride this weekend. So, like I said, I did a lot of stuff all at once. Um, and this is kind of tying it all together. But um, I will have some riding videos this weekend. Be riding with a XP 1000 2020 Razor, um, another general, a standard general deluxe, uh, Razor S 900, and a couple other wheelers. So, you know, we'll be putting it through its paces, um, seeing kind of how it how it goes against the ones that I already raced, um, the XP 1000 and the general. When it was completely bone stock on the 30s, obviously now on the 32s, you know, I don't know how much faster it would go, but 80, 81 miles an hour, 82 miles an hour. That's way more than it needs to, but it's pretty impressive that it gains that much. And it gets there a whole lot quicker. Um, you'll see in the, the clips before this that it gets there pretty impressively quick to 70. And it takes a little longer to get to 80, but it's, it's still pretty crazy on 32 inch tires for something that weighs, well, essentially almost 2000 pounds. Um, so I'm super impressed with it. Um, Gilliman definitely did their homework on that. It, uh, she rips, 